Well, I always feel like I look like an eight-year-old in Patia who's been screwed over by a bar girl, but... Uh... So a couple days ago on a Friday night, I met up with my buddy Kevin for drinks. You know, we talked about the usual stuff as single men living here as expats in Thailand would not normally talk about. You know, just the typical degenerate things because single men such as myself living here in Thailand, we're all degenerates. We live a very degenerate lifestyle. Half kidding. But the majority of the conversation that we talked about was our dating lives. You know, who we're dating, who we're seeing at the, at the moment. And we started talking about the social dynamics of the previous single men, single male expats living in, here in Thailand in the 1980s and the 1990s versus single guys living here in 2021 in our 30s and 40s. And we were talk, talking about the comparisons and the expectations of those dating dynamics. And it's made me realize that Western men back in the 80s and the 90s living here in Thailand, for the lack of a better term, they were easily manipulated by the Thai women back then. I'll explain more about this in detail, but first, I'm actually gonna meet up with a very, very important man, a special friend. You guys will definitely know who I'm talking about. But first, let's go meet him up for coffee. If he's okay with being on camera. All right, so we had a couple coffees, had some uh, croissants, and uh, I'm gonna give you guys a hint uh, about a specific someone who all he ever does is wear Hawaiian shirts. I'm gonna give you two to three seconds to figure out. This is his shtick. Now I'm gonna review who I'm hanging out with. What's it's going on? Me. What's going on, Tim? How you doing? Very good. Thank you very much for the coffee. Yeah, absolutely. Now I was hanging out with Tim, and I, you know, he's known. I've seen him all the comments about his Hawaiian shirts and whatnot, but. He told me a couple, like about half an hour ago, his true intentions and how he truly feels about wearing Hawaiian shirts. Well, the whole Hawaiian shirt thing has uh, been a bit of a joke for the longest time. And um, I've actually got about 40 of these shirts, but I don't really like the shirts in reality. They've just become a thing that you sort of like to uh, have a laugh at. But every time I look in the mirror, I sort of think I look like an eight-year-old pedophile in Pattaya who's been screwed over by a bar girl. But uh, I know that doesn't happen, of course. But uh, yeah, I always <laughs> feel a bit strange in these Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> all right, Tim. This is uh, definitely not staged at all, but uh, it, was a good ch it was good chatting with you. We had a productive uh, discussion. Great to chat to you too. Did I give you the uh, bank account so you can push the money into the account? Oh shit. So for a lot of you guys that don't know, that's actually Tim Newton with the Tiger. I actually just sent him off. He was having trouble ordering a grab back to his uh, place of work because he's old. And uh, somebody's got to take care of old people. No, 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 but in all seriousness, he's a really down to earth. He's a great, he's a great guy. We talked about a lot of things. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for a couple things in the future. Now to kind of continue about the conversation of what I had with Kevin, we talked a lot about the social issues and the uh, dynamics in dating here in Thailand. And we're comparing guys that dated uh, back in the 1980s and 1990s versus guys like myself that are dating here in our 30s and 40s. What I discovered is that the guys that were dating here in the 1980s and 1990s, you know, a lot of them, you know, they were, they're now much older in their 60s and 70s. Back then when they were dating, it was mostly you know, they would come to this country and I take it that a lot of these guys were just goobers or didn't really have a lot of success dating back in their home country. So they come over here back in the 80s and the 90s when, you know, the economy in Thailand was generally much, much, much lower. They would show up thinking, I'm a big fish here in Thailand. Let me just lead with money. They paid for everyone. The woman that they're dating, their uncle, their sister, their brother, their entire family, their extended family, they would just go out and just throw cash everywhere, buy them buffaloes in their village, buy them for, buy their house. The dating dynamics, although the cultures are very different, it's generally very, there are some similarities. You know, if a woman thinks that she can take advantage of you, she'll definitely try and take advantage of you. And for a lot of these guys, they're paying for buffaloes, they're paying for houses. And, you know, once the money runs up, they'll just be completely cast away. They'll be kicked out of their home because generally you can't own homes or you can't own land here in Thailand. So the name to the house and to the name to the land is usually from their 
former Thai girlfriend or their former Thai wife's name. Once they're kicked out and used and abused, they lead a very jaded, bitter, bitter existence. Just hanging around at a bar in Central Patia, you know, talking about their horrifying story of being scammed by the person that thought that she loved them. A part of me really sympathizes with them that this happened, but, a, but another part of me realize that hey you should have been much more smart you should have never left with money you should have guarded your your finances in all essence it's entirely your fault you could have just said no don't buy them the buffalo and just moved on that's it but no you you had no financial discipline you had no boundaries and you just paid for their buffalo now you're in this situation where you have no money and then you're stuck in this country drinking away from your bitter existence everything in life all your successes and all your failures are entirely up to you. Personal responsibility. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. They're definitely not perfect. So if you compare the guys that were easily swindled back in the 80s and the 90s versus some of the newer single expats dating here in Thailand in our 30s and 40s, we've learned the mistakes from our predecessors and we're putting the foot down, we're saying no. No. We're, we're in our prime, we're in shape, you know, we've got money, and we're saying no we're not gonna buy you that damn buffalo. If anything, buy your own buffalo. If I'm gonna buy a buffalo, it's gonna be for me, all right? I want a pet buffalo. And one thing I would like to add is that you can't totally hate the woman for doing that, what she needed to do. She's doing this in order to survive, to prosper for herself and her family. Because if I were in her situation, I'd probably done the same thing. I would have, you know, even though ethic, you know, ethically and morally, it's the wrong thing to do. Like, I get it, I understand that you had to do what you had to do. I've actually heard some cases where, you know, said former bar girl, you know, had to do the whole bar girl thing for two to three years. She saved up enough money, bought a house, started a business, and now fast forward now, she's definitely much older in her 40s and her 50s, but owns her entire construction company, you know. She, but she had to do these things in order for her to proceed up the social and economic ladder. I get it, you know, I sympathize for them. You know? So you kind of have to look at it from both perspectives. She played you, and the only person that you can be mad at is yourself for being played. So be smart, have situational awareness, and question everything, always. Whether it's friends, whoever you're dating, constantly, constantly, constantly vet them, all right? Because some of the women over here, they don't necessarily love you. They love your money. So act accordingly. This is the reality that we live in. People benefit from screwing people over. People get screwed over. Shit happens, you know? But if you're, unfortunately, if you're ever caught in a situation where you do get screwed over like that, I've been through it as well, don't worry about it. You lose a couple hundred dollars, make more money, all right? Make more money and continue to prosper and learn from your lesson, all right? Because if you keep repeating it over and over again, you're just gonna be like these broke ass motherfuckers living in Isan or in Central Patia and trolling on the Thai visa forms. Don't end up like those guys. All right, so hopefully this serves as a warning, uh, some type of advisory to kind of help you guys out. Whether you guys agree with me, disagree with me, leave it on the comments down below. You know, anything I'm missing, you know, I'd love to, love to hear different perspectives of this. You know, whether what I'm saying of some of these older single dudes that dated during the 80s and the 90s here versus some of the newer guys like myself and my group of friends that are in our 30s and 40s dating over here in Thailand. It's issues like these that I've always, you know, create, cause some type of curiosity. I like to learn more and more of the dynamics, the social dynamics of this all. It's weird, my, my brain works. My brain's kind of weird like that.